السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ومن اتبعه داه لا يوم الدين أما بعد ما dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers we are continuing our topic about the tips or 50 tips about how to get rid of the desires or avoiding following one's desires because this is a disease and it is a sickness and if it influence if the hawa or the evil inclination influenced any good deed that good deed will become fruitless so anything which is influenced by the hawa will be fruitless for instance if a person is leading an abstemious life zuhud he denounces and rejecting the pleasure of this world but then the moment the moment he follows his own desires this will be ruined uh, or the showing off the moment he starts showing off that also will harm and render his zuhud and abstemious and life into a fruitless one also judgment the hukum if it is influence if the judge is impartial the judge is following his own desire then this will lead to injustice also among the these tips that we should know my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers that the only entrance or the only access to our heart the only access to our heart that the, through which the shaitan can reach our hearts this access there are two ways there are two ways or two what we can say doors or two uh, windows through which the shaitan the satan can access our hearts what are these two windows or two doors two things lust the hawa and the second is the doubts that's what imam ibn qayyim said imam ibn qayyim said rahimahullah shaitan can access your heart through either shahawat desires lust or shubhat doubts so how to close these two doors how to close the door of lusts that's by the taqwa the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinking of the consequences fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will help you to close this door of lusts the other door how you close it the door of doubts shaitan comes puts doubts into your mind that needs ilm knowledge so the knowledge will help you to overcome and to oppose these satanic temptations how are the desire or this evil inclination because here bear in mind that the word how are we we should get used to this word how are how are how are which means inclination so this inclination either it is as we mentioned in the beginning when we started either it is praiseworthy that is when you are inclined towards righteousness or blameworthy when you are inclined towards doing evil deeds so the hawa is the opposite of the the hidayah is the opposite of the divine guidance so always we should do the opposite if you want to prosper if we want to succeed in this life we should always act on the contrary do the opposite because your nafs will never dictate to you to do good things the nafs always tends to invoke and tends to encourage you to do evil deeds that is the nature of the nafs as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna an-nafs la'maratun bis-su indeed the human soul is prone to evil so that's the nature of any human being so the na- our nature that always our souls tend and incline towards evil so we have to act on the contrary do the opposite what your nafs dictates to you do the opposite then and only then insha allah you will succeed and you will prosper also we think about the that the uh, among the tips insha allah is that the pleasure the pleasure of sinning is short is very short and then the consequences are very dreadful that's why in islam the muslim scholars they say 
a sin will breed another sin. A sin will breed another sin. And also they said that the perpetration of sin, when you perpetrate a sin, what happens to you? Sweetness, the sweetness and the pleasure and delightfulness precedes the doing of the sin. And the bitterness comes after. I will explain this. Whereas the doing of the good deed, the bitterness precedes and the sweetness follows, comes after. When you want to commit something shameful, something haram, a misdeed, evil deed, before doing it you are only thinking of the fun and the pleasure you are going to have. That's the only thing, yes, I'm going now to do this, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to have that, etc. You are thinking of that only, and the sweetness of it. But the moment you finish doing such horrible act, you feel bad about yourself. You hate yourself. You regret, and you might cry, and you feel that your chest is squeezed, as if someone is squeezing your chest. That's what you feel, because that is the consequence, that is the result, that is the bitterness which you are going to have until you enter the grave. So, when you commit a sin, before committing it, you will only think of it as sweetness, which is very limited, short. But the bitterness will, be, will remain with you till the end of your life. And the opposite is true, that the bitterness precedes the good deed, and the sweetness follows. For instance, to get up for the Fajr, we are talking about the Muslim men, they get up for the Fajr to go to the Masjid. It is here difficult, bitterness only. You feel, oh, it is cold, how can I leave this bed and take wudu, it is cold and also walk in this cold weather, it is bitterness, something against the nafs. But if you get up, take wudu, and go to the masjid, and you attend the congregational prayer, what do you feel after the salah? MashaAllah. Sweetness, delightfulness, lightness. The same thing in taraweeh. Before the salah, or if the Imam is reading, mashallah, one yuzu or two yuzu, long salah. You feel it is difficult for you. But the moment you finish the salah, you enjoy the salah and you feel the sweetness. So the sweetness comes after doing the good deed. And the bitterness comes before it and the sweetness following it. The sin, the opposite. The sweetness first and the bitterness will remain with you forever. So think of that. May Allah save all of us from falling into the traps of the shaitan. Amin. Also among the tips, insha'Allah, that if you follow your hawa, if you follow your desires, you will be disqualified from being a leader of the righteous, an imam for the righteous, a role model, because this will disqualify you, because you are not the right person for that. Also, the one who follows his desires, his hawa, is just like an idol worshiper. Because the hawa is another idol. Idol not necessarily be a statue, not necessarily be something tangible. Sometimes it can be something immaterial. So this hawa is another idol. So if you are following your own hawa, you are worshiping another idol. So you are not worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. You have another God that you worship, which is your own Hawa, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. 